Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Celtic Mind Podcast. I'm with myself today. Lewis is a bit busy doing something, so we are going to be doing um, the Celtic um, FC tier list as from the title. Um, there's it here, Celtic FC 21 squad. So, everybody here, guys, and it's obviously, you know what a tier list is. Before that, guys, please just give like, and of course, um, of course, guys, you know what comes for. Um, before we do it, of course, it's the intro. <laughs> Alright, guys, after the intro there, let's get into it. So, the, the, tier, the lists are vital, important squad alone, and a cell. So, a squad player is mainly like a. You keep it in the squad, you know, you're basically, you know what it is, you. Um, you know, let's further do let's get into it now. We start with James Forrest now. He's not had the best season, of course, being out um, on a long term injury since the Sarajevo game back in September. He's been out since September. He only came back a few weeks ago against the Medis. Come back after uh, in, in the game against Dundee United, which obviously um, just confirmed Rangers winning the um, league title to Rangers. Um, played not bad, made a few good chances on the right hand side. I think honestly he's got to be up there in the vital because, to be honest, James Forrest when you see him at the best, guys. I don't either if you're at the game, like before obviously the virus, or if you're watching it on the phone, whatever. Right, he's he's got to be that vital player to get you. Might not might not got the get, might not get the goals. Right, he might not get the goals, but I tell you what, he does get something. He gets assists and gets a little bit. Peaches of a crosses and sometimes in great assists, and as he deserves to be there, to be honest, um, in that vital area. Now moving on to Scott Bain, um, is there anything else to? You know, in fact, I'm gonna change cell. I'm gonna change cell. There we go. Oh, <laughs> okay, I completely messed that up. Punt. There we go. Right. Yeah, this is really talking about is it? Well, the reason I would put Scott Bain there is because, like, when you're talking about, all right, some people can say, maybe put him in the squad, but maybe th that's fine with me. You can you can put him up there with the squad, right? But um, when you're thinking about it now, if this new manager um, comes in, and I'll, I'll, I'll need as well do Barkas, as it is. Barkas was actually a five million player, and I think he deserves another chance, to be honest. So I'm going to put up there in the squad, right, because, you know, in fact, important, because he's not obviously the vital player, right, but we've spent money on him. We deserve, he deserves another chance, like one of those, we've spent five million on him. And this, uh, oh, fair play, if this new manager comes in, whether it be Eddie Howe or somebody else, if he goes in there and says he wants a new goalkeeper, fair play, don't punt Barkas then. But if this manager wants in and he's not going to buy a goalkeeper, try Barkas, you never know. Lennon didn't really, you know, Barkas came in and out and out of the squad. I know I said all oh, the the views to the game of Barkas. What's he doing? What's he going to do? <laughs> um, well, I th I thought about it more. I was like this tier list, and um, you know, the amount of money was spent on five million. Maybe the, this new manager will, um do something obviously to um maybe get his I don't know get his goalie inside him, come back into him. Because we've seen it at AK Athens when the rumours were going about we were signing him. I watched it. He's absolutely brilliant. Against us as well in the Champions League qualifiers as well. So there's a goalkeeper in there. We just need to find out. Uh, as I say about Scott Bain. Alright, he could be that squad player. But, you know, I, don't, I just don't think he's a Celtic player. To be honest, when you look at that save against Dundee United. <laughs> um, well, yeah, it came off his face. And I thought he actually saved it. And I was like, well done, good save. He never actually saved it. It was going in. It just miraculously, if that's even a word, literally um, hit his face. Like, oh God! And I'm thinking to myself, I don't want a goalkeeper like that in my goal next season. And probably the goal, um, probably the um, what do you call it? The oh, I was gonna say, probably the new manager doesn't really want to see him there as well. To be honest, um, obviously, guys, you can make your choices down below. Um, I'll link the 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 tier the tier list there in the description so you can have a go yourself. But for me, Scott Bain is a must go in the summer with the new manager. Um, comes in. Moving on now, guys, to um, a film of face back in August. Bolly, bolly, golly, bolly, bolly, golly. 
don't know how he's doing that, but anyway, um, bowling, bowling goalie, wow. <laughs> We've heard of him for a while, eh? Well, he's caused us probably the start of the, the absolute rubbish, um, absolute... <laughs> oh, my God, the way you can describe it, man, it's... Oh, my awful season we've had, man. The bowling, ball, the bowling, bowling goalie. You know, when he was actually in the side for it, when he going down to Istanbul, he was, they were actually doing great. Do you know what I mean? They, they beat Man United when he was in the team, so there you go. But when he's, get, when he's out of the team, man, that's, that's his fault as well, man. He's injured in the, in the relegation battle with him. Oh, his fault as well. Uh, aye, for me, bowling goalie, he'd, he'd, yeah, it's just a must go, innit? A must go. You know, you could say he deserves another chance. But the way things are going with a new manager coming in, but Barkas here has spent you know the five million. Lennon just bought me. I, I, I don't understand it. Where you can bring in natural talent, where in Scotland, where for some reason at Celtic you have to bring in these people that like, like Sir Patrick Kamala um, from Poland. What's he? He can't score in front of goal for some reason. He can't score, and it's just um, <clears throat> it's just that one where. Um, you say to yourself, why did we have to go out where we get natural talent? Like your David Turnbull was like, what happens this season? We're saying no, brilliant. Your uh, Cal McGregor's, your you know, all the good Scottish players. So for me, I suppose I know I suppose on Bongo, but for me, Patrick Muller has to go no now, to just to get a bit of football for his career in his hands. Anyway, um, moving on now to um, from Bongo, um, yeah, he's just yeah, just got to get out of there, man. Like I don't see him, you know, I don't think he's better than. Um, what do you call it, Greg Taylor? Um, because um, as I say, that Greg Taylor is just a he's you know he's, he's a solid performance all season compared to Laxalt. I'm switching all you left left backs here, guys. Laxalt, um, of course, won't be with us next season, so he. I don't think we should sign him. If it was a couple of million quid on his cheap, fair play. But. You know, the, the rumours are going about like 8 million, 9 million. Nah, I mean, he's had decent performances throughout the season, but you've got to fair, like the whole season, um, you got to say that Greg Taylor has been um, that that player that's been the best in the left back position. That's why I'm putting him up and the squad position. Now, I've explained the first one, two, three, four, five, six, seven players, guys. So, it's going to like if you enjoyed it so far. Moving on to Anthony Ralston now. He's been there for a few seasons now. You know, he's. I was like to play when he, um, what do you call it, when obviously the Dubai crisis again um, in January, don't really talk about that, but um, go back and check it out guys, back in January, that whole thing, um, that disastrous thing, but anyway, Anthony Ralston, I don't think he should really be a longer a Celtic player, it's just that I don't think he's got the talent in that right back position, I mean, if a new manager comes in, maybe, but for me, I'm sorry, Anthony Anderson, it's a must go. Uh, moving on to Connor Hazard now, who won as the, you know, I wouldn't say technically it helped win as the, the, the Kajutlu treble by some spectacular saves in the, the cup final against Hearts. The, the penalty saves, of course, the two penalty saves, or two or three, I don't know, but um, it helped us get to that Scott, uh, win the Kajutlu treble. Obviously, he's not going to be the first choice keeper, obviously, for next season with a new manager, right? But for me, if he's a second or a third choice keeper, you know, he's got to be up there in the squad because um, he's decent talent. I think he's, he's going to be there, you know, if you loan him out even longer for his career and at all, I don't think he'll want to stay at the club, you know, he's longed up to 2023. So, second or third choice keeper, perfect for me. Now, moving on to, we're moving on to Stephen Welsh now, another um, good youth player that's coming in. You know, anybody that's coming in after Duffy is going to be good, right? You know, Stephen Welsh, when he's came in, he's like solid palms and every time he plays he seems to get better and I'm seeming to more like him as he gets growth into the, that centre back position. Obviously, as I say, the manager might not pick him, but Stephen Welsh, he's got to be some talent and I say, get him signed up uh, Celtic for the few years we've got. Um, I think he's signed up anyway, but Stephen Welsh, what a talent in the, the centre back position, as people are saying throughout the season, if you watch my watch longs as well. Um, Christopher Ayer doesn't have to babysit him like he does have to do with Duffy. Um, you know, he has to watch Duffy. Compared to Welsh, where he's got that, he's not got that strength, but he's got that height which, which will help him. Um, he scored a goal a, couple, uh, a month ago or something that against Malwell, which is a really good header, in fact. So, to be honest, 
he's up there with the greats of Con Hazard as well. He's obviously not the first team start for me next season, of course, with the new manager and stuff. But to be fair, um, he's got that with the bench start, you know, the bench. Numero's runner, of course, Odson Edward. Everybody knows that he is going in the summer. Um, of course, he's you know he's, he's more likely to go. Uh, but if you're talking about who's like if you're going by the wiser, the vital players for Celtic in the moment in time, you know you got to say Edward. He is up there, right? Because what a player he has been. Obviously, maybe not this season, but um, if you look at the stats over the years. If you look at the stats throughout the years, Celtic now, look at Celtic, so 2019, he's played, look at the stats here. So even in the Europa League as well, obviously I mean, I would, so look at the stats here, so he's had, so go to Scottish Premiership, so start, 2017 18, I think it was a loan deal, yep it was, um, 22 matches, he played 9 goals, 2 assists and 1 of it, um, 32, and then he started more games in 2018-19 season, 15 goals up again. Last season, 22 goals, while wow, in a season only 16, man, that's a downgrade, but, of course, um, you know, he's been an, an absolute excellent player for Celtic, you know, obviously he's going to leave, it's probably your likes of your Arsenal's or your French sides that's going to look at him and probably sign him, but for me guys, as a player for Celtic right now, he's a vital player for um, Celtic. Moving on now to another five million pounds that may maybe maybe may, uh, many people will say down the drain, but for me again it is the same as Barkas. You spent that money. Now we've missed this kind of. I wouldn't say he's kind of like a Morelos type striker where he's not the Edward where he wants to run it literally do the fancy skills to score. He just gets there and scores. You know, gets the goal um, like they have the Dundee night game a few months back in August. Um, start the season, he gets the goal, you know, boom, right in the net, and um, we've missed that type of player, to be honest, um, I, I don't know last time we saw a player like that, but um, 5 million, we've not seen much of him this season, I'm hoping that the manager gives him a chance, you know, maybe he won't, you know, maybe he doesn't want to play him, but he gets his own signs in, but I'm hoping we get um, a chance for him next season, the manager, I'm hoping he gives a chance, like Barkas, 5 million, that's 10 million total in the important section already. 10 million there. Maybe they deserve a, com a second chance, guys. Uh, hopefully they do. You know, I've explained Barkas, you know, yet as well. Hopefully they do, guys, maybe next season. Um, and yeah, moving on to Near Beaton now. And of course, if you go to Near Beaton. Now, Near Beaton, um, you know, we've got. I'll go to Wikipedia, right? So, he joined Celtic and I don't... When did he join Celtic? Celtic. Now, he joined Celtic back in... I don't know, when did, when did he join him? I don't actually know where he joined him, to be honest. I think it was back in the 2012. Okay, so he joined back in 2014-15, okay. Um, so that is a few, few years of it. I don't know. Um, he's currently 29, um, obviously a, a centre mid, which we put him at centre back, maybe more this season to the, obviously the last season, of course if Julian got injured or something like that, um, obviously the number midfielder plays a as well, um, obviously in the Nationals, um, you know, he obviously doesn't have the few share of goals, you know, he's only scored, he's only scored one this season, I don't know what that's been, to be honest, I don't know, but, to be honest, he's been a solid centre back, it's um or a midfielder when you put him there. But it's obviously sad to see him go probably go this summer, like these people here. But yeah, I think Beaton has his time at Celtic. What if there was a player in there, of course? <coughs> um, I think it's sadly time to see him go at Celtic. I think it's time to see him go. Now moving on to well, Duffy. Well, there's not really to talk about that. Is it really? He's going back. Get him out here. <laughs> Just get him out. Move on. Move on. Now, Christopher Iyer now, obviously the most talked probably transfer this season so far anyway. Um, obviously, it's going to be um, obviously leaving in the summer probably, going to go to transfer like say, AC Milan, yeah, I don't know. But, um, we're probably going to see him, oh, sorry, we're probably going to see him 
leaving this summer, which is very disappointing. I would try, I would try definitely try and get him on a contract, anything to stay that one year. Maybe help the manager out next season. Maybe do something to encourage the team next season, whatever it is. But I'm sorry to say that he's probably going to go. But oops, I'm not putting on the punt list because obviously I'm not putting him as a Celtic player when he, as he still is. He's got to be that crucial centre back for Celtic right now. He's obviously brought back from a striker to midfielder to a centre back. Absolute solid mid um, centre back. Absolute solid best centre back I've seen in years. Absolutely years. Now we're on to the young players now. I'll bring up the stats as well if you go to the camera. Um, now, will Caramel will get his game time? That is a problem. But you see Celtic fans always are talking about it. Caramel Dembele is on the verge of leaving in the summer. Again, because when the youth development is absolutely atrocious, where we don't have a, a we literally don't, don't literally, um, like the youth players don't know if they're going to survive to the summer like they're going to play. Now, Kerem O'Connor de Belli, for me, uh, I seen him the first time when he obviously played and uh, when he broke out, obviously, uh, against Hearts in the first professional game he made. And what, what a young talent we've got. Wow. If you play him, what a young talent. I think he plays in that right wing position. He plays, what a talent he is. He's, he's small, but he does have that strength and speed on him. He's got some talent, to be honest. He's got that very talent. Um, for the new manager coming in, I don't see him putting it vital. I don't see him putting important. It's all about me though. I, don't, I, I think he's a squad player. I think he'd be there with the likes of Connor Harvey, he's a Stephen Welsh, obviously Greg Taylor as well. But for me, um, he's got to be a squad player. Moving on now to Lee Griffiths. Now he's been linked with um, obviously Aberdeen. I think his time at Celtic's up, to be honest. I think he's had the best, the best out of him. Lee Griffiths uh, throughout the years, you know, Brendan Rodgers, you're on the um, I think we've had the best out of him, to be honest. I really do. Um, and yeah, I think he's got to go. I really do in the summer, I think we really do. Um, now moving on guys to David Turnbull. Well, a hero this season. I'm not a hero, obviously. Doing much, obviously, when I won 10 in a row. But, I tell you what, what a player he has been this season. I've got to say, he's up there with the vitals. I tell you what, obviously, Edward and Guy are leaving. But up there with the vitals is James Norris and, obviously, Turnbull. Turnbull, some player this season. In that midfield, he drives that midfield forward. Controls it, as you would say. Brilliant, um, you know, when Brown's not being the part, I think David Turnbull's there. Um, just fluid football, you know, just up the park. Some strikes, brilliant football. Um, some goals he scored this season, absolutely brilliant goals he scored. And yeah, he's probably one for the future as well, v uh, vital player for the manager next season. Now moving on to Christopher Julian, where we have obviously seen him injured about um, two times this season with a long term injuries. And well, um, obviously, but I still think he's important, to be honest, I think he's important because um, he's a solid centre-back when he plays, you know, especially last season when he broke in, uh, obviously Neil Lennon signed him, um, the Lazio especially, um, lots, of pl lots of games you could point out he's been great, the goals as well, so I think he's a solid um, centre-back and I think he should be up there and important, I really do. Um, moving on to Mikey Johnson now, where... Of course, we've got him down to a, uh, what do you call it, five-year deal, I'm pretty sure, I'm not too sure. Oh. Now, Mikey Johnson, we have got him down. He's only 21 as well. Uh, Divine. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, well, we've got him down for a long while, but for me, I think next season, maybe the man, me, I don't think he will be there. Not as a punt, I think he'll be there as a loan to another team. I don't think he'll be there on that Celtic side next season. I don't know why, I've just got that feeling that um, he's not going to be there next season. Now, moving on to Luca Cornell. Now, he's been on loan at, um, what do you call it? He's been on loan at Queen's Park. Yeah, keep Queen's Park Rangers in the Scottish League 1 or 2, I don't know. But his, his first performance, he did very well. He got an assist and got a goal as well. He, apparently out of the room as well, he was very good. Uh, but next season again, like Mickey Johnson, I don't see him starting. Uh, it was obviously nearly him bringing him in. So I do think him, he and Mickey Johnson will be out more next season. Now moving on to Ewan Henderson now, of course, at Dunfermline alone to the end of the season. Again, the same deal with Mickey Johnson and Luke O'Connell. I just, you know, 
it might be there next season you could put him up in the squad but for me it's got to be Ewan Anderson alone yeah I think he's still got to build that um, now as Malo Soro now he broke through it and the team has signed him Leland has signed him beginning in 2019 no middle of 2019 I think or the beginning of 2020 sorry and um, he never played um, you know people are saying he should have played when we already won the league title obviously the the, the group was born Celtic already won it so this season it was a chance for him and he obviously got his chance to break through and what a strike what a, st what a star it was um, he was brilliant in midfield I thought he was really good for, um, defending as well at defence midfielder but as well passing as well was really good that strike against Dundee United didn't really mean much but what a strike it was and I think for next season he's got to be one of those important players for next season um, alongside you know your Barkash, Elliot and Julian uh, moving on to Ryan Christie now well 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 well, um, I've said a lot this season, he's not, his shots are absolutely atrocious from outside the box. When you can easily pass it to your Edwards or some David Turnbull, something like that, it's a great, great chance to score. He shoots and it goes mainly into the stands where luckily there's no fans in the stadium where it hit somebody with concussion. Because Ryan Christie, well, he's got to go. He's got to go. Boom. Absolute punt him. Now uh, moving on to John Joe Kenny, of course, um, he's obviously came up from Everton now and I think he's been decent in that right back position, you know, of course we didn't have a right back because Jeremy Frimpong left, the Barry Leverkusen, so do you know what, he's been solid in defence, I tell you what, obviously that mistake to give away the corner for Morelos' goal against, Ranger, uh, against uh, obviously Celtic Rangers game, that was a mistake, but when he was signed him in February, now, I think he's been solid, to be honest. I think, you know, there's nothing being said about him. He's been bad, really, except from that mistake. That was that really. I think he's been, honestly, a wee bit quiet. But, to be honest, maybe we should potentially put him... We should put him in a squad because we potentially should maybe go for that buy. Obviously, it'll depend on the price and, obviously, depend on the manager. If, obviously, he wants him or he'll sign somebody else. Now, moving on to Jack Kendry now. He's been called up to the Scotland squad, um, obviously, this, this year. And a couple of days, as um, you know, the Israel game, Albania, and of, so I think he's been solid in defence. You know, he's probably not the player that it will be there next season, but he's been solid for Scotland. I tell you what, and he's but he's getting linked with moves to England, like a ten million move and all that stuff. But for me, he's still got to be there in that punt move. I don't think he's going to be there next season. I think I don't. I just really, I have a feeling he's, he, you know, he's still not good enough for Celtic to be honest. Um, a Dundee player, of course, ex Dundee player. I, do, I, do, I just still don't think he's there, to be honest. We're not too bio now, and he's he's performing well for Toulouse and um, the French league now. Of course, coming from the same as um, Christopher Julian. Um, he's also Ivorian. He plays Toulouse, right? Um, his stats now. We'll look at his stats now from this season, of course. Well, okay then. Uh, he's played 23 matches and he's played, he's got 6 goals, I don't want, I 6 goals, which is not bad for a good, a decent striker, to be honest, we signed him, obviously, under Neil Lennon again, and um, played a few games th that season, didn't really start the 2019-20 season, he started, he didn't, obviously, got loaned out this season, so, for me, um, he's got to be a loan out player again, I don't think he will be there, he might, he might come back, but, nah, for me, he's still a loan out player. Now we're on to Olivier and Sham now loaned out to um, Marseille, who the manager actually got. Yeah, the manager actually got. Um, didn't want him. If the didn't want Evelyn and Sham, so he left or get sacked. I think I don't know one of the two, and that was a big mess over in Sham again. For me, in Sham, he's had the best out of him. What we've had, you know, I don't know what we've had out of him really, but. To be honest, I think we've had the best in charm, and I think he should really be going in the summer. Now, moving on to the final one, two, three, four, five, six, seven players. Um, Marvin Shed now, and of course, you know, um, of course he plays for, oh, well, I'm not going to pronounce that. Um, obviously, he, he's a, he, he's a Celtic player, but, he plays a right winger for Mitchell in um, obviously on loan from Celtic. For me, I think he's just got to be there. 
leaving again. I don't think he's got that Celtic talent that we all imagined that he think we had. You know, he came on a Champions League qualifier, I think, a couple of years ago. He, he got a goal, but it wasn't the best of teams to play against. So, yeah, I don't think he should be there next season. Now, moving on to Tom Rogic. Not the best of players this season we had. Of course, we can't fault that. With the winning goals we've got, you know, yeah. Um, the Scottish Cup final and the treble, the goals as well. Brilliant goals he scored against Rangers and all that stuff. But for me, I think it's an end of a uh, Tom Roger for me. I think it's pretty. I think. Oh, oh no, oh no, 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 no. Oh no, 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 no. <gasps> oh, thank God for that. I thought I missed that. Um, no. For me, yeah, it's an end of a Tom Roger for me. I think it's pretty go. Now, we're going to Callum McGregor now, where. Um, before that, guys, let's just put under them there. Yeah, I don't, there's not much to talk about, you know. He's, you know, he's in them. And Tim as well, I don't know too much about what? Maddie Bear, I didn't even know we had him. Right, anyway, <laughs> Cal McGregor now, a crucial player for Celtic in my mind. I think he's got to be up there with the vital players because obviously Scott Brown's leaving, so we can put him up there. So um, Oh, so sorry guys, uh, yeah, Brown's got to go there, oh, Brown's got there, Brown's leaving, it's uh, an, an error of Brown, um, you know, Cal McGregor's going to be there for Brown's place, of course, potentially he's going to be, the, maybe the next captain, maybe not, maybe Ayer, you know, to keep him on more season, but, to be honest, I think McGregor's been great, um, not the best of players I've seen, but he's one of the best players we've seen this season, not obviously this season, but one of the best players we've seen a couple of years' time, um, a couple of years, you know, we've seen him brilliant, brilliant goals he scored, the brilliant passes and assists, of course, and I've got to say, yeah, he's going to be up there with the vital players, of course. And last player, guys, but not least, it's Mohamed El Nussi now, not, um, we've not had to see the best of him again this season, but He's come up with some vital goals this season, um, and I think he's going to be up there important again. I think maybe we should get him. Also, all depending on the price and the manager, if he wants him. But for me, in my opinion, I think he's got to be up with an important player. And um, what we've seen this season, you know, got us a goal against St. Johnson. Obviously, it didn't matter. Rick was already over. Um, I can think a few many guys. You obviously you can come down below as well. But guys, that is the end of the tier list video. That is my opinion on the Celtic players. What should we do in the summer? Thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe and like. And this is um, obviously Celtic Minds episode 6, I want to say. Or 7. Wait, what? Let me check. So we're on. Alright, so we're on episode 7. Okay, guys, thanks for watching episode 7 in the Celtic Mind. And I'll see you guys for another podcast soon.